Now, in order for us to figure out if the amount of Ethereum sent with a transaction is greater than or equal to our minimum USD of $5, we need to convert the amount of Ethereum into its value of dollars. So how are we gonna do that? Well, the first thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to get the price of Ethereum or Avalanche or Polygon or whatever native blockchain token that we're working with. So let's create a function to do that. We'll create a function, get price. And this function is just gonna get the price of Ethereum in terms of USD. And then we're also gonna create a function called get conversion rate, rate, which is going to convert a value to its converted value based off of the price. For now, we're gonna make them both public functions so we can play with them, test them, and do whatever we want with them. To get the price of Ethereum, we're gonna use a Chainlink data feed, and we can go to through the documentation to get that information. So in the documentation, I'm gonna scroll down using data feeds. They've got an example here, right in Solidity. And if you wanted to, like I said, you could easily open this up in Remix. Now you can see this example in the documentation, what's actually going on when we're working with a Chainlink price feed. There's a contract out there at an address, and we're gonna call this latest round data function on that contract. It gives us a whole bunch of data, but we really only care about the price. So we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing. We wanna reach out to that contract that's currently storing and having the price updated. So since we wanna reach out to and work with the contract, we're gonna need two things, right? What are those two things? Well, we need the address and we need the ABI. The address of the contract is gonna be really easy. We can get the address by going to the Chainlink documentation and let's go to this price feed addresses section. We'll scroll down. We wanna be on Ethereum. Okay, great. Let's look for Sepolia. Looks like it's way down here. And all right, awesome. ETHUSD, great, there's an ETHUSD price feed. So now that we have the address, how do we get the ABI? Well, before with simple storage, we imported the entire contract from the top and we compiled and we got the ABI like that. We could do that here, but that's kind of a lot of code and we don't actually care about what the whole contract looks like. We only really wanna know what the functions are so we can call that latest round data function. Remember, if we're on Remix and we go down to the compilation details, the ABI is really just this list of functions that we can call on a contract. The ABI itself doesn't actually need to include any of the logic. It just needs to say, hey, these are the functions you can interact with, and here are their inputs, and here's whether or not they're payable, and here's whether or not they're view functions, etc. Like I said, though, this kind of is a white lie. You can also use a function selector or some other ways, but we're just going to ignore that for now. How can we get the ABI? There's a concept in Solidity known as the interface. If we go to the Chainlink GitHub, we go to smart contract kit slash Chainlink, we can see a lot of the different contracts in the Chainlink repository. We can go to contracts, SRC, this might look a little bit different based off of when you're looking at it, V0.8, interfaces, and we go to aggregator V3 interface. If we scroll down, we can actually see a whole bunch of function declarations, but none of them are actually implemented. It's just function, the name of the function, some stuff, external view, blah, blah, blah but then just the semicolon and nothing inside of them. This is what's known as an interface. If you compile this, this will actually give us that ABI because it defines all the different functions that you can call on a contract. It just doesn't have any of the logic. Again, we don't really even need to know what the functions do. We just need to know how to interact with the contract. And if a contract is deployed, it'll have that logic in its deployment. So what we can do is we can copy this whole thing, scroll all the way to the bottom, hit the copy button, and paste it in on a remix. Now, hold on though, if you're following along, you don't have to copy paste it in here with me because I'm gonna teach you something in just a minute that makes this a little bit easier. This pasted code alert comes up. We're running Solidity code, so this is gonna be okay. But since we're only working on test nets here, we're gonna be okay that we don't have to worry about pasted code alert. If you wanna take a second to read it, please do. But we're gonna paste this code in here, just like we did before with simple storage. For now, you don't have to follow along. I'm about to show you an easier way. Just follow along and watch. Now that we have this interface, aggregator v3 interface, we can use this interface to make API calls because now we have the address and we have the ABI. And we can even compile this and it'll compile fine. So we can say aggregator v3 interface at address this and the combination of these two give us whatever code is at this address with all the functions from the aggregator v3 interface. And just to test this out, we can do something simple like dot version. Since if we scroll up, it looks like there is indeed a version function put a little semicolon at the end. So let's actually go ahead and actually copy this line, give it its own function called get version. This will have this public view returns. What is the version up here return? A uint 256, we'll have a return a uint 256. Paste that line in here, aggregator v3 interface at its address dot version. We'll say return all of that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and deploy this to the Sepolia testnet just to show you what this would actually look like. However, I'm gonna recommend you don't do that for now, just know that this will work. This way you won't have to wait forever for your transactions to go through on the testnet. So to do this, I'm gonna go ahead, scroll up to the top, 
go to inject a MetaMask, change the contract from aggregator v3 interface to fund me. I'm going to go ahead and hit deploy. My MetaMask is going to pop up. I'm going to go ahead and hit confirm. And we're going to scroll down. And now we have a big blue button called get version, which I'm going to go ahead and click. And we can see we get a four return because at this contract address on the blockchain, it has the functionality for get version returning four. And for the rest of this lesson, I'm going to be showing you guys and testing this on an actual testnet. However, I recommend that you don't test all of these as I go along. Just watch me do them because, again, waiting for transactions on a testnet can be really annoying. Sometimes the testnet might be having issues because, again, it's people running them out of the goodness of their heart. So for this lesson, just follow along, write the code with me, and then maybe at the end, deploy everything. So this is a really easy way and a common way that people use to interact with other contracts outside of their projects. They get the interface of that contract using the interface keyword. They compile it and the compiler actually gives us an ABI. And then you just wrap an address around with that interface keyword and you can call any function at that address. And, and this is one of these things as we work with more and more, it'll start to make more sense. In the beginning, it might be a little hard to grasp, but just bear with me for now. The more we do it, the better you'll get. Don't get discouraged. Take a deep breath and exhale and let's keep coding.